Well, hi there, everybody. Uh, my name is Ruth Bridcut, and I'm women's worker with Irish Church Missions. And it's a year ago since I had the privilege of interviewing Cameron and Alex, um, who are, were at the time last year about to come and work with Irish Church Missions. So thanks to Zoom, we've been able to connect. I'm in an apartment in North Dublin, and they're in County Down at the moment in Northern Ireland. Um, but it's an opportunity to catch up and hear how things are going for them since this time last year. So Cameron and Alex, how have you been since this time last year? What has been happening? Uh, it's uh, great to see you. Thanks, Ruth, and uh, hello to everyone there. It's good to see you, but, although we can't see you. <laughs> It's one of the things that Ruth really gets annoyed by is people saying, it's good to see you. Um, in, in the last year, we've had three things that we've been focusing on doing. Uh, the first thing has been to raise enough money to buy a house and to find a house to buy. Uh, the second thing has been to raise enough money for us to be able to support ourselves and the ministry we're looking at doing. And the third thing has been to focus on doing research so that we'd be well placed to get started with the work of bringing the gospel to people in the Silicon Docks area of Dublin. So uh, I'll give you a bit of an update on the, those three topics and what's been happening in the last year. Uh, Alex. Uh, well, as Ruth has said, um, we are living in County Down in Northern Ireland, but we do have a house. We've managed uh, after a bit of a uh, bit of a blip just before Christmas. We thought we had a, an apartment just before Christmas, but we had to uh, pull out of the purchase. But uh, just after St Patrick's Day, we managed to pick up the keys to a, a small terrace house in um, North Dublin. Um, just before lockdown, so we have the keys. We own a house. Um, but we haven't been able to obviously move into it. So um, that's wonderful news. We, we thank God for that. We thank um, everyone who's been able to provide um, both financial gifts and um, some sponsors who've been able to provide loans for that. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, we... Uh, we look forward to moving down into that at some stage. <laughs> that do we? <laughs> done on, the, on that house before we can move into it. So, um, so it's not in a ready-made situation. We just simply can't just move into it. There is some work to be done. Um, but I'm especially looking forward to it. I'm really feeling um, a longing for um, a home. Um, mm. We, we of course looking forward to not only a house but um, a ministry base. Um, but I'm looking forward to home. We've been married for 20 years, over 20 years now, and I think this will be the tenth house move that we have made in that time. Um, and of course, we've um, when we left Carrick Fergus, um, which was where we've been for the last. Well, four years. Yeah. Um, we left in August and um, we were thinking that we might have been away a couple of months and so we packed a couple of um, backpacks with a couple of clothes and put everything into storage. Um, but it would be nice to be surrounded by our own things, our yeah. own clothes and bedding and some books and things like that. Um, and, so, and of course, we've had the best weather since lockdown has started as well. <laughs> yeah, it's been amazing. Absolutely. We, 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 we keep on wondering what, what part of the world we're in. Uh, if, we, we, down in Dublin, we're <laughs> <are> still wondering. <laughs> well, so, yeah, we, we, we've, got, we, we've got a place to live and we're in temporary accommodation. That's We've been longer here than we expected to, but well, we're so looking forward to getting down and uh, uh, living among... Uh, the people we're wanting to min be ministering to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even though you've been physically often far away, it's been great that we very much feel, Cameron and Alex, that you're part of the ICM team. I can say that for us down in Dublin. Um, how have you found it, uh, being within the ICM team? Uh, it's, it's great. Um, it, it's really lovely to have a, such a group, group of people who are so loving and caring of us. Um, actually, Alex and I were talking about this, uh, something like this, the, the other day. 
Um, and Alex, were you saying something about, um, uh, you know, in the moves that we've done for ministry, what was it that, that this is the first time we've moved somewhere where we already know people on the ground? Yeah. Uh, and to be building that relationship even now and to have that relationship with people, to be moving to a country where we already know people is just so, something that is so lovely to be able to do. I think I mentioned at last year's Entrusted that as you get older, your friendship groups tend to, to get a bit smaller just because you do get older. And, of course, with each move and this is now the fourth country that we've lived in, you, you tend to lose friendship. Of course, you gain friendships, you meet more people, but you tend to lose them as well. So it's a real, it's a real joy. I mean, God is so gracious in giving, um, giving us friends that we already have um, in the ICM team. And in the few in the people that we're already meeting, say to Manuel, um, that that's that's an unbelievable joy, and I'm really looking forward to, to getting to, to build upon those things. Um, in the move that we made to England and to Northern Ireland, we didn't know anyone, but we know people here, and that's that's wonderful. And one of the things I'm loving about um, uh, the situation we're in at the moment is that while Zoom isn't the it's not the same as being face to face with people or having them side by side with you, but actually we we get a hint as to what people's names are <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> and, down the bottom. Yeah. It's great, and so it's, it's also been an equaler. It's been great in Emmanuel. We've appreciated in this time that people who, like yourselves, but others from the church who, for various reasons, have been far from Dublin, have been able to join in in a meaningful yeah. way. That's been great, and we've appreciated. I mean. You've come down and helped us out over Christmas and various times as well. In fact, many times we've hardly felt in many ways the distance wonderfully. Yeah. Um, in the time, though, is there anything that's been of particular encouragement that you might share with us, please, either within or outside of Ireland? Yeah, there's been a whole stack of stuff, uh, which has been really lovely, actually, with uh, at my mum's church back in Australia, uh, when I went to visit them just over a year ago, uh, there are a group of men in that congregation who really latched on to what we're doing. And uh, there are, they have a men's breakfast every month, I think it is, at St Swithin's in Pimble. And they got in touch with me and asked me to come and join them for their oh. breakfast <laughs> Zoom meeting from over Across here. Across the world. Yeah, yeah, it was really lovely. So we stayed up really late and they, they had breakfast quite early. But it was, it was just a great encouragement to have that partnership in the gospel. But we've got some other friends who are a bit south of Sydney in a place called Jamboree, um, Jody and Mandy. And, and uh, we've known Jody and Mandy for 30 years. Um, <laughs> and it's been lovely to, to reconnect with them. We, we uh, reconnected them. Um, with them in, Jer in Jer Jerusalem, actually, mm. um, at the same time when we agreed to uh, to work with the ICM. Yeah, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, um, and uh, they've been great. Uh, their church has been a great prayerful support for us, um, financial support, um, and uh, uh, we had a, a Zoom, what we say, a... Uh, it's just a Zoom meeting. Yeah, very casual. Initiated, actually, I think, by the some of the guys in the congregation as much as by Jody and Mandy because they just wanted to catch up with us and see how we were doing. Yeah. It was just really lovely and personable. Yeah. Um, what, what else? Oh, yeah, there's a group of people, a group of guys who I met through Trevor Cleland's church in here in Northern Ireland. Um, and they, um, they're a group of guys who are all in trades and uh, they're a part of a broader group that help mission organisations um, get focused on mission uh, by doing trade work for them. And so they invited me to come along and speak to them and they've been helping us. They helped us out with something with the house and a bit of surveying work and that kind of thing. Uh, brilliant, um, yeah. Anglican Aid in Sydney have been continually really helpful they're helping us um, helping Australians give in Australian dollars so that they don't have to transfer funds into different okay. currencies and that kind of thing 
Yeah. Um, I met with uh, people from the Zacharias Trust in Oxford just before the lockdown, along, along with some other people in London who've been a great support, St Nicholas yeah. Cole Abbey um, and uh, St Helens and St Peter's Barge and Trinity Road Chapel, all these, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be missing people out. Yeah. Uh, but what was particularly interesting by the guys, uh, the Zacharias Trust, is that they have experience in outreach to people in the technology sector in their head offices. And they've been really generous in saying that they'll help us out in the future as we, uh, as, as we need to call on them and maybe able to, even able to do things on those tech companies' premises. So helping out with resources and advice and skilling more so than with yeah. finances. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. But so many ways to be encouraged. That's wonderful with God's provision with people with different gifts and skills. Yeah. Well, then you said about going forward. Um, is it okay to ask then what are your plans under God for going forward? And in particular, we're all thinking we can't wait till COVID-19 has passed. Um, what are you thinking as you look ahead? Yeah, one of the great things is that we don't have to wait for COVID-19 and all of the lockdown to, to finish before we can get started with some of the work that we're looking at doing. Of course, it's different to what we imagined. Uh, yeah. One of the things we, Alex and I spoke about a couple of months ago is uh, one of the benefits, perhaps, of this situation is that we had any number of plans and uh, we've been reminded that we're not as in control mm -hmm. as we think we are. And we're we all learning to... that. But yeah. yeah. And isn't it good to know that we um, we have a God who is in control and he knows what he's doing. Even if we can't tell what's going to happen next, we can trust him. Uh, but we can be prepared to just be faithful in the way that we conduct ourselves in the meantime. So in the meantime, while we're waiting for this to end, uh, we can do things like make contact with those small number of churches that are uh, faithful to the gospel, that are in in Dublin um, and start to build a network with them so that they know what we're planning to do with outreach to workers in the Silicon Docks area um, to try and tell them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, so that they can be uh, praying for us and also so that they can let people in their congregations know what we're doing and they're are a couple of people we're aware of from those congregations who might be able to, who, who are believers, who are working in those, that area, who we can start reading the Bible one-to-one -one with, even before geographically we're in, in Dublin. We can do it over Zoom or whatever uh, system is best for them. And we can start building those relationships and start making those plans with people who are actually in meetings with people who are not Christians and start working even now at strategies for speaking to colleagues about Jesus. God willing, that sounds exciting. Yeah. Is there anything particular just as we finish that we should um, be praying about? And actually, would you mind saying if people are interested to receive regular prayer updates, um, how could they go about doing that, please? Yeah, Alex, what's on your mind at the moment for prayer? Um, two things. I'm not sure if you're going to cover one of them. Um, I think we're all, everyone's feeling um, just sort of unsettled at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling, I go through waves of feeling particularly unsettled because we're not home. We're not. We're neither here nor there. Ha ha ha. Um, mm -hmm. I think something very biblical about that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm. I'm really learning that our um, our real home is heaven, mm -hmm. um, and that's a great lesson to learn. Um, but prayers, particularly that um, when we do get to the house in Dublin, that we will use it well, both mm. as a, a home for us and a base for yeah. hospitable ministry. Yeah. Um, but also, um, when we talk to people in ministry and uh, amongst Christians, 
when Cameron went to raise awareness in London and in Oxford mm -hmm. and amongst my ministry wives um, contacts um, in Great Britain, I was recently on a conference there, um, just how difficult it is for them to conceive of the few mm. numbers of mm. Jesus loving Christians there are in Dublin. It's impossible for them to understand and conceive that. Mm. Um, and so, <sighs> yeah. prayer for how we can convince people of the need. Now, everyone who is going to be interviewed for these videos and for ICM will be asking the same same thing but prayer it, there is such a need mm -hmm. and it's very hard to convince people that of this need when they're not on the ground um, mm -hmm. yeah uh, when i was in london uh, just before or just as lockdown was starting, uh, I was speaking to a group of people and I was using some Operation World data and uh, I shared with them that the number of evangelical Christians in Ireland is the same as the proportion of evangelicals in Cambodia. And there was an audible intake of breath as people were so shocked to hear that a country that they had never conceived of as needing mission work being so in, in the midst of such a famine of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so um, prayer that we are winsome in the way that we get that out to people, that we raise awareness of that deep gospel need and that that gospel need will so work its way into our own hearts that we see the desperation and that drives us into prayer and into the work itself sometimes being distant geographically is so frustrating and we've been waiting sort of two years before we're before now and we even now we're still not there so dealing with that frustration in a godly way that drives us deeper into prayer and deeper into a passion for sharing the gospel with these people well that desire you've shared of seeking to share the good news of Jesus with the many people in Ireland is what we're about in Irish church missions. And it's so encouraging that though there's been challenges along the way that you're with us in that and God willing will be with us in the same city in Dublin uh, in the near future. So I think I'll just say thank you so much for joining us. And we do hope to see you soon in person. And thanks to everyone for, for watching as well. And actually, maybe just to finish, how can they connect? If there's someone who, who uh, would like to receive more of your regular updates, what should they do? Yeah, we do have uh, a prayer letter. It's all um, uh, sort of data uh, protection approved and that type of thing. But the best thing to do is to get in touch with me by email. And that's Cameron, C-A-M-E-R-O-N, at irishchurchmissions, all one word, dot I-E. Send an email to me and I'll be able to send you the form for that. Or you can find us on Facebook at the Silicon Docklands Project uh, page. So go there and you'll be able to sign up for that prayer letter. Or I suppose I should give a plug maybe for the Irish Church Missions website. I'm sure there'll be links and ways, ways to find you there. Well, let's say goodbye for now and um, God bless you in your, in your endeavours right now. We pray for God's blessing on all of us as we seek to connect with so many people in these uh, constrained times. So thank you so much. Bye thank for now. you.